An armed man fires dozens of shots into the air and holds police at bay in a Southwest Fargo apartment complex. All right, News 11 uh, has several crews on the scene of that standoff, and uh, Norman Bell, photographer Norman Bell, captured that video of the gunman actually standing on the balcony and firing the shots. And he joins us on the phone now. Uh, Norman, you were on the scene before the police perimeter was actually set up, is that correct? Yes, ma'am, I was. Okay. Um, They've actually come in and swept us out now. I'm quite a bit farther back from where I was before. But I'd say about six minutes ago, I heard another 15 to 20 rounds go off in that apartment. And I'm not sure whether it was him firing or police firing at him. So were you, so did you see any activity then while that was going on? Did you see any activity in the window itself, in the balcony area there? No, I didn't see any activity in the window at all. The, all the lights are on, so I, I'm assuming we wouldn't be able to see the actual fire from mm -hmm. guns. Now, uh, the video we're seeing, it appears that, that was taken a bit ago. Um, it looks like the gunman was firing uh, toward the ground or in sort of in your vicinity. That was the last time I saw him step out onto the back balcony and fire a shot. Mm -hmm. It looked like he was aiming at something on the ground. Okay, so where you're at now, you do feel safe, but earlier you were literally in the line of fire, were you not? I was directly in the line of fire. I'm, I can still see the balcony from where I'm at, but I'm pretty shaded here. All right, well, Norm, we're glad that uh, you're safe and made it through uh, all right. This is very frightening video. Um, Norman Bell on the scene of that standoff in uh, Southwest Fargo. Will Norm, if you hear anything else, let us know. Will do. All right. All right, and uh, we will have more information on this as it comes to us. Today's lesson has to deal with floor joists. When we get out to this XO3, it's going to be a different end. But first, a quick history lesson. The city of Fargo, through its Neighborhood Revitalization Initiative, bought the home that used to be here and tore it down. Now a new home is going up in the South Fargo neighborhood. I think it's really nice. The house that was here before was kind of in shambles. And the builders are working for free. They're Fargo South students. It's a fun class. It's fun to get out here and build. It's part of the school district's construction tech program. All of these kids could walk out of here and go work for a contractor. I mean, they'll know two ways about it. For years, Fargo South and Fargo North students have been building homes at school. Then they're later moved to another site. This is the first time they're building a home for Fargo's NRI program. Here we're doing walls in a concrete basement. We don't get to do that there. Uh, we start dealing with uh, the difference in framing materials. So these students are learning and helping revitalize the neighborhood at the same time. They hope to have this lesson plan wrapped up by the end of the school year. In Fargo, Don Robertson, KVLY News 11. The Bison football season kicked off just a few minutes ago. We get a quick update now from Pete Burns. He's live at the Bison Open. Pete? Hey, Kerry, the Fargo Dome is rocking right now. This place is making a lot of noise because Bison football is here, and we're going to talk all about it when we come back next in sports. <laughs> I thought to myself, I'm never going to play again. That's all it took. But on that one play last fall, Butch Blahoski's promising football career was over as a junior at Shanley. I've never seen an injury up close and personal like that, as bad as that. Story's over, right? Not quite. That's not the Butch way. Butch, Butch, Butch. That was a goal just to get back and play hockey right away because I don't want to miss first year Shanley, you know, and then. So I think I met all my goals pretty much so far. Right here near the 10 yard line of Dakota Field is where Butch went down. But his strong work ethic made sure that this leg injury only ended his season and not his career. He's been involved in activities throughout his whole life and you know I'm, I know it was real tough on him when it happened but um, he's been tremendous throughout this whole year and getting right back as soon as he can. I figured if I didn't come back in time you know I was kind of letting the team down on my part by not being back you know, and pushing myself to be back and play you know. Because I think they still have expectations for me. Physically, Butch is almost 100%, although he still has a lot of swelling in his leg. Now he needs to work on the other part of the game. It's going to take time, I think, until it's 100% in his mind is going to be after that first game, after he takes some hits on it and, you know, can see that he can make it through that. It's always going to be in the back of my mind, I think, you know. It's kind of might take a game or two to get back into the swing.